Hello again. Uh, a little while ago, I made a little mini rocket stove heater, and uh, that was just a, sort of a proof of concept for the real deal, which is a rocket stove water heater for my hot tub. So I've done this once before, and this is the old one. Um, went to the junkyard and I got an old air compressor and I cut it in half as you can see here and then cut a door in it and then on the inside you can see it there it's fallen off I took it out on the bottom half but I lined it with a mixture of perlite and Portland cement and refractory uh, cement comes in a tub it's wet um, and that worked all right it was a little brittle um, but it held up to some pretty high temperatures and then uh, what I did is where these two halves are divided here on the inside I put a, a sheet metal divider and then insulated that with refractory and then there was a hole at the back of that divider so the firebox is down here there was a damper in the bottom build the fire in here fire burns at maximum heat uh, the hot gases come up through that divider and then in this top chamber uh, I just had a simple coil of copper half inch copper tube and it would uh, inlet and then outlet and then the gases would go out the chimney and uh, it worked real well the problem was because the coil is half inch, the copper coil. There's a lot of resistance. Uh, and because of, the, because of the shape of the inside of that chamber, the coil had to come in, do a bend. Uh, I had to have an elbow. It was a brass elbow, which I found out is not a good idea. <laughs> and then it would coil up. And then it had to come back down to, to, to come out that fitting there. So there's a sort of an air trap in the top, and so that meant that I had to have a pump to pump the water through the coil. And if that pump failed, uh, the water in the coil would quickly boil off into steam and uh, basically cause problems. And then if the pump failed and the water boiled out of the copper tube, the brass fittings would quickly melt and the whole thing would sort of be done with. Um, I had to replace a couple melted fittings. So, this time I'm going to use the same air compressor body because I like it. It's compact and I kind of have this fantasy of um, maybe getting a dolly and welding it to the to the frame here uh, so that this whole thing is mobile, has wheels, you can cart it around and then uh, the whole thing will fit in the back of my pickup and uh, I could take it to the river or to the beach and then fill the tub with uh, river water and uh, have a hot tub without electricity. That's the other ideal here is to get a heat exchanger built that is going to function on a thermosiphon, um, no pump necessary. So, to that end, I made this little model here. Uh, this is pretty confusing looking. But the basic idea here is what I'm going to build is a rocket stove, uh, which is a cartridge fed rocket stove water heater. And this is all going to fit inside that container, except for this piece here is the chimney. And uh, so these. These three, these three here will be inside and insulated, surrounded with insulation. And this first one is the fuel cartridge. So sticks, branches, and stuff will go in there, and then there will be a, a lid to keep it airtight so that it doesn't burn in the wrong direction. And then down here, we have what's the air, the inlet for the air, and the burn chamber. The burn chamber is right here. This is the updraft tube updraft into 
this middle one here is the going to be the heat exchanger chamber. And so the gases are going to come in and then they're going to flow down and then out and then here's the chimney and then this is just a clean out for the chimney to uh, so I can clean out any ash or what have you that builds up at the bottom of the chimney. And now for the heat exchanger what I'm going to do is a shotgun style heat exchanger which is going to be uh, a manifold at the top and then a whole handful of parallel half inch tubes straight up and down and then another manifold at the bottom so that I'll have a large diameter pipe at the bottom and a large diameter pipe at the top and it'll break up into you know smaller diameter pipes to facilitate the heat exchange um, just like an old-fashioned steam boiler and uh, that straight run of pipe is going to make it easy to flow a volume of water just by thermosiphon, um, no pumping necessary. And then the top, this is open here and open at the bottom so that the heat exchanger will be removable. I'll be able to slide it down in there and seal either end. And then if I need to pull it out to clean it, if it ends up building up soot on it or what have you, I'll be able to pull it out for inspection. And uh, also in case, uh, you know, it doesn't work, I can redesign it. So, that... <laughs> That's basically it. And then, uh, so what I've done is I've gotten this six inch pipe here from the, uh, from the junkyard and I've started cutting the pieces out. So this right here is the, uh, the, the air inlet, the burn chamber right here. And then this right here is where the uh, feed tube is going to go. Um, I'm going to make that out of just regular thin wall chimney pipe since it's not going to get hot and it's going to be insulated all the way around the outside. And then this is the updraft tube and then it goes in to the heat exchange chamber and that top is where the heat exchanger will be able to be uh, dropped in and then all those pipes will be inside there and then off of here is my exhaust and then off the exhaust is another piece of chimney pipe. I'm going to weld a collar onto this and then a uh, regular chimney pipe is going to come up off of that. So, um, it's not going to be a rocket mass heater uh, because there will be no mass. It's all going to be basically um, all the heat is going straight to the water, hopefully. It's going to try and extract as much heat as possible from those gases using the water as the mass, I guess. And, um, yeah, so this is the start. And now I'm going to weld this together. And then I have to uh, seal this hole in the chimney here. Seal the hole in the bottom of that. Uh, and then cut new holes to fit all of those fittings into this um, knock out this old insulation here and then uh, see if it works. Alrighty, there you have it.